um, some someone I've been reading a lot of, Young Chul Han. He's very much influenced by. He's like a. He's very much influenced by Lacan and uh, and Hegel and um, and also Heidegger. And yeah. um, I'm, I'm reading. I was just reading, and I'm. I have a video coming out. Uh, actually, I don't know when, but I'm working on it right now. Uh, co- uh on his book in the swarm. Okay. And it talks about uh, digital media and how um, it's there. The, he, he talks about he has this really good, uh, nice idea of how in reality we confront the other and we like because we can see their faces. Right. So we're confronting otherness in uh, actual social social relations. And there's always like an opacity of the other. Like we can't we don't know the other's desire. Right. That's the fundamental mystery. Yeah. But this is contrasted for him by the transparency of the touch screen and how we can just scroll touch you know flick um on our phones just to when we're confronted by any sort of otherness we can ju- that may um be uncomfortable for us we can just get rid of it um through and there seems to me to be a a parallel or at least like he's um he doesn't really say it explicitly but it seems to be a conversion t- convergence here between a Heideggerian critique and a Lacanian critique, um, which is why I'm bringing it up, uh, because yeah, the Heidegger- so like, Heidegger- with, like the question of technology and then mixed with Heidegger, yeah. or with yeah. Lacan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and specifically, like, even, not even, um, not even just technology, but even just, like, a being in time critique from, like, Curio- um, um, section, like, 38 or something of being in time talks about curiosity, and curiosity is essentially just it's related to idle talk and ambiguity. So the three ways in which uh, design um, becomes distracted and curiosity is like this continual um, searching for novelty for novelty's sake, right? Like moving, like in the digital realm, we're looking for new images. So that would be like a Heideggerian along with the technology, like this is a Heideggerian critique, but then he, he also talks about the Lacanian critique would be it's um, we're not confronting And this would probably be even more Hegelian that we're not confronting the other. And it's through confronting the negativity of the other that we actually experience. um, We undergo any sort of, well, for him, it's like, he even talks about how you, there's no truth. There's no um, experience at all without experiencing the other. He calls it, um, he calls it the digital way of experiencing narcissistic self mirroring. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I wonder, do you have anything to say on, on this uh, specifically on how um, he converged uh, the, there's like a convergence point here between the Heideggerian critique and the Lacanian critique of uh, the digital uh, and digital media. Yeah. So like, as far as I've never read uh, Bong Cho Han, uh, I did watch like the one with uh, that you did on the scent of time with, uh, with Pleep. It was mm-hmm. really good. And then um, the agony of Eros, right. That was another one that you, yeah, I really liked that one. Um, but I, I always wondered, too, like, um, in my mind, like, when you look at, like, uh, social media and stuff, and just overall, like, digital technology, um, the convergence of Heidegger and, um, you know, Lacan. And on the one point, like, you see more people, like, in a sense, they are networking, you know, they, they're adding people um, on different outlets. But again, they're not really like engaged with, um, you know, speaking with them via like, you know, vocally, uh, you know, people are typing like, you know, they're sending direct messages. But even that, it seems like that is decaying because like people would rather comment on posts rather than actually message mm-hmm. people uh, mm-hmm. like how like it used to be when when Facebook first came out, like people were using the, um, you know, the messenger thing uh, and then now it's just like immediate like uh especially like on instagram and stuff immediate like like and then heart it and that's it like that's the the only thing that you need to do uh and then you mentioned like there's two things that you mentioned uh the novel the search for novelty mm-hmm. and then um the sort of uh what, what did you word it as like a, a, a narcissism uh, uh narcissism uh, self-mirroring yeah self-mirroring yeah and and uh i think those are the two things that I kind of uh, thought of intuitively because like as fast as the internet is, it's like everybody is creating trends with like the littlest thing. 
Um, and no matter what you do, there is no, there's nothing that is like uh, of novelty or even authenticity or like just trying to be unique or like, you know, even stand out because as soon as one thing happens, then it becomes a trend. Even in the world mm-hmm. of memes, one meme happens and then that template just literally becomes like, you know, like uh, uh, just another way to, to create a new meme using the same template. Um, and like with that being said, like that goes hand in hand with uh, the, the like narcissistic self mirroring because uh, people like more selfies than everything, and especially like um, like when it comes into like the, the main example I was talking to with uh, with Plebe was like the the recognition that people want when their selfie is is liked. You know, like, cause if you like, you like, you know, if you scroll back, like scroll through and then you see like, oh, that, like, that's a nice picture or whatever, or like maybe a family member sees it, but like, you know, they like it, that may not matter, but when you have like a bunch of other random people liking it, and then you have this recognition and like, oh, it's like the world is liking me and the world is giving me this, this, uh, the satisfaction of my image. And I would say that this, the selfie image is actually just a digitalized version of the secondary narcissism in which it's whereas primary narcissism again like was I was talking about it with like um you know the relationship between um the a mother function and the, the child um where the libidinal drives are satisfied immediately like the hunger drive um and you know the um the bowel movements etc mm-hmm. but in the symbolic function it is the uh desire and, and the recognition to, to, to have the desire of the other. And what you're satisfying is the ego ideal rather than the ideal ego. The ego ideal is going to be that image that functions through the super ego. And so like seeing uh, the way media, social media culture is that everybody wants to have the recognition of their selfie through the other, through like, and you see this with like uh, influencers, uh, like, like, and, and mostly it's going to be with, with women and, and like, whether they're, they're Instagram models or whatever, or like gym selfies, the less clothing they have, the more likes they get. And like, you know, all these different symbolic gestures, but it is at the end of the day, getting the recognition of the other, how many hearts, you know, likes, and even the comments, like, this is all like, still searching for recognition uh, from the symbolic other uh, or just the other in general. And no matter what the trend is, there's no novelty because at the end of the day, you're trying to have some type of recognition, right? You're not trying to stand out and be this individual. You're actually trying to demand some type of, uh, you know, recognition from the others via whatever it is. Right. And, I, I think you could also relate this to um, at least in terms of the the like ever increasing amount of stimulation that people need to yeah. feel uh, entertained. Um, I think like I think this would also relate to like a Lacanian um, a Lacanian take on desire where desire is based on a lack is based on what you don't yeah. what you don't have but just having more images or videos or or whatever present even even likes and follows just having more of those present that doesn't actually satisfy your desire that just makes the amount of stimulation you need even like it it just increases it like um like even in the case of like pornography like there's porn addicts who like need uh um they, they just they're they need to have more perverse or more extreme uh, they need to watch more extreme forms of pornography just to get aroused yeah. because they've been so desensitized. And that's something Han talks about as well. Um, so that's basically, I think all of that, you can only really understand this through a Lacanian yeah. take on desire that's based on lack. And we're having these um, yeah. things present to you. They're not fulfilling your desire. It's only um, making uh, making it more extreme in a way. Yeah. And, and as you get into late Lacan, do you get not just desire, but fantasy and, and like, I'm not as well versed in late Lacan or just, or not even late, but just like overall middle Lacan and up to like seminar 11. Um, but like most of my stuff on like understanding the fantasy comes from, um, you know, reading Zizek 
uh, Sublime Object of Ideology in the Plague of Fantasies. And then um, uh, one of the students of Lacan, uh, Jean Laplanche, where he talks about how uh, fantasy is the, the scene uh, in like which the ego learns like how to desire. Mm. And so like you mentioned pornography, like that's a scene. And in a way there are different symbolic structures and that's telling you how to desire sex in a certain way. You know, it, it, it's, it's not, it, it, it is not even real sex. It's, you know, literally you can say like, you know, this is literally just acting, you know, they are shooting this in different segments. Uh, yeah. And this to stand third, but the point is that there's this jouissance that says, well, even if it's fake, uh, you know, unconsciously, you're already teaching yourself how to desire. Um, bringing it back to uh, the like other forms in social media, as far as like enjoyment, um, you know, like there is a bunch of other stuff that you can see like in social media, like for every meme or like cat video, et cetera, there's always gonna be like this motivational stuff uh, or like self-help grind culture that you see. And uh, what you're saying is like uh, about lack, this they're pointing out like that you lack something but what you lack is the fact that you're not happy with your job you need to quit your nine to five you need to uh grind and and then like you know hustle get off your ass or whatever and they're all repeating the same message and that you know you could conquer your your worthlessness by you know following whatever this program is or just by you know getting that that and for men, it's like that, that alpha mindset or whatever like yeah. that. Um, or like you need to, you need to have, like, you need to hustle. You need to be on the grind and yeah. telling you ways to desire. And that because it's appealing to maybe it's the way you have a certain perception of your ego, your ego, your ideal ego, um, that now you want to project it into the ego ideal of that. Like there is this, like, what, what, uh, I think Lacan says it too, but uh, Zizek referencing uh, Plato, the Agalma, like um, object cause of desire. Mm-hmm. And that there is this like core self that I need to unleash. And that's what a lot of like uh, self-help stuff, uh, pseudo stoic, as I call pseudo stoicism, like you see in like the uh, business ethics, self-help market, like they always like to water wash like stoicism as is like, oh, like, you know, take control of your emotions and stuff so that you could be the best version of yourself. Mm. Like that this, it's a fantasy. Yeah. And, it, and again, like, I wouldn't say it's like the Heideggerian authenticity or Dasein, but in a sense, it's like this, like image of a singular singularity of like, this is who I'm supposed to be. 